All right, welcome back everybody to Lee Pitts Live. We're here at the beautiful Naples Botanical Garden. And I just tell you, I don't want to leave this place. The accommodations are just outstanding. I'm already plotting for my pilgrimage here next year. This is about our fourth time coming out and it's just always been a pleasure. We're so excited to have an intern in the building from Florida Gulf Coast University who's working with the Community Redevelopment Agency. And what's her name, make her famous? Nakilla is here, and you can bet your last money. It's all going to be a stone gas, honey. So we wish you, we wish you love, peace, and soul. It's an inside joke. Speaking of the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Fort Myers, we have here the assistant director. Not her first time on the show, so good to get her back, my good friend Melanie Long. Melanie, welcome back to Lee Pistol. Thank you. Melanie, you've always told me that you, you told me off camera that you just love that whole aspect of being behind the scenes and making things happen <laughs> at the CRA. T tell me about that personally, what joy that gives you to see projects that you guys are working on come to reality. That is a great question. <laughs> I really do. Um, my, the whole point of the CRA, the Community Redevelopment Agency, is to do redevelopment and agency. So we go into neighborhoods that are, a lot of times people aren't thinking about anymore. People, um, you know, they want to go to the newest, the cleanest, you know, and developers mm -hmm. especially. They like to go to someplace clean because it's easier to get through permitting and everything. When you have to do redevelopment, there's extra hoops you have to jump through. Mm -hmm. So the Community Redevelopment Agency is there to try and help those um, people do redevelopment mm -hmm. to get through those extra hoops. And that's the stuff I like to do. I like to make sure they can get through permitting. They can get through whatever they need. And one of the things we do is we have grants and incentives that um, help redevelopment in different areas. So it's just one of those chances for me to um, see things grow in neighborhoods that some people think are too old and neglected. Lovely. People are seeing those acronyms behind your name. A-C-I-P. What does that mean? It's the American Institute of Certified Planners, and it means that I have my credentials as a planner. Mm -hmm. So I like to accentuate credentials, Doc. Uh, the, when you have those types of credentials, you have to go through some kind of study process, right? You have to yeah. study a lot of things. Do you see that that helps you in what you're doing today? I am such a school person. I, I love education, even though I, I tell people all the time, you don't always get your education in a college. You can get your education in a lot of places. I am very comfortable in college. So if it's college or a class or something like that, I can go to it and I learn well that way. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a good way to learn. And you're right. It was a, um, when I got my credentials, it does help me. But I've been a planner for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. I'm doing redevelopment planning now, and it's a little different than development planning. Mm -hmm. We have to think more outside the box, do things a little differently. So although my credentials are in planning and it's more, re, um, more development planning, I came to the redevelopment agency and I had to learn some things that I didn't know when I was just getting my AICP. So Okay, good. <laughs> well, I want young people to understand that you know, uh, the importance of still being um, professional, getting your different types of certifications and all that all plays out well in the long run. Well, I would tell you it makes you more marketable. Mm -hmm. People, sometimes when you're looking for a job, especially in planning, um, they'll say only AICPs mm -hmm. um, need apply, you know. And so having some initials behind your name, sometimes it seems ridiculous because you have all those letters, but it does help you market yourself in the world. And you're a doctor of what? I'm a doctor of philosophy, okay. but it's in planning ethics. Okay, because I was having this little cold and I was going to have you look at it, doctor. <laughs> Different kind of doctor, but I will look at that because I believe in chicken soup. I think All it's... Right. <laughs> what are some of our community redevelopment areas in, in Fort Myers? We have four active right now. We have downtown, which was the first, and it was developed in 1984. Mm -hmm. We also have the MLK, and it's our largest. We have Cleveland Avenue, and we have Central. Mm -hmm. Cleveland Avenue, how far does that go down? It goes down to Bonita, not Bonita, I'm in Bonita, I'm sorry, Boy Scout. Really? Yes. Is that goes, relatively new, the Cleveland area? No, it's... Which um, is the newest one, CRA, to your knowledge? Do you um, know? Central. Central, mm -hmm. okay. So that's, that's, that's some more opportunity, more chances of us seeing even more things come into play. Especially right now. Uh, right now, we're doing the update to the downtown plan. And we're hoping that we're going to be able to extend, expand the downtown area to encompass Central. 
Mm -hmm. Central has a whole lot of areas that don't create um, taxes. They have a lot of places that are um, um, institution. No, well, that too, but institutional and um, nonprofit and things like that. So they don't create t a tax base. But there's areas that are abandoned that need fixing up. That if we had some increment financing for, we can do um, redevelopment there. So we're hoping to expand the downtown area because downtown has some. Everybody knows when you go downtown, it looks very, very different from 1984 when it first started to now. Mm -hmm. Everyone always tells me, I came here for the first time in 2000 and it, downtown looked one way and it looks even better now. So it's getting better all the time. We do a lot of redevelopment, but um, now it's time to spread that wealth a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try and move it down to Central. Many people have heard about the Midtown plan. We wanna do some things in Midtown. We wanna do some things in Central. Um, the increment money would really help. We can do some infrastructure um, projects that will encourage developers to come to the central area. Mm -hmm. Now, you saying central as though everybody knows what that is, so I'm going to slow that down for a okay. minute. This is going to be a two-pronged question. One, Sesame Street to me, what is central? And two, tell me what is the community redevelopment plan? Go. So central, I... I wish I knew the exact um, general idea. Okay, or landmark. it's south. It's south of the downtown area. Okay, and it goes down to Edison Avenue, and so that would include that Red Sox Stadium and all yes. of that, so people can get an idea. Go it ahead. It does include that, and it goes over to Cleveland, mm -hmm. and it goes. Um, I don't know what the um, it goes either. beyond Fowler. No. Okay. It does not. It comes. It's like about a block in. Mm -hmm. um, but you get but, all the way down to the Edison Mall for Central. No. Okay. Edison Mall, though, is in the Cleveland okay. redevelopment area. So, and you were talking about plans. We, the plan is like, and I, I guess it sounds a little sacrilegious, but it, I mean it in not a sacrilegious way. We call it our Bible because if it isn't in our plan, we can't do it as the redevelopment agency. Mm -hmm. So we try to make sure we put everything in our plan that we want to do in that area. So if we want to do um, infrastructure improvements, if we want to do incentives like grants or um, you know, pro other programs, it needs, to be, it needs to be spelled out in the plan. Mm -hmm. And so um, we go out to the community and we ask them, what kind of things do you see? You have to ask the community because as a planner, if I don't live right there, I'm looking at it from 3,000 feet. The people who live there are living with this every single day and they may come up with ideas that I had never thought of. Mm -hmm. So we make sure we get out in the community, we try and ask them questions. As I said, we're, doing, we're updating the downtown plan right now, so um, we really hope you go to our website. I think you're gonna- um, It's on the screen. Yeah. Thank you. And you can go there and you can participate. We have this thing called CRA Bucks in there where we give you so much money. I think it's $8 million. And you can spend that $8 million. You can either improve the water. You can add sidewalks, lighting. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of things you can do. And you, you can only spend $8 million because that's what we have to spend. Mm -hmm. So you can see how you can spend that $8 million. And it's, it's a great exercise. And then we retain that information and we see how people wanted to spend the $8 million mm -hmm. and see if we can fit that into our budget and see mm -hmm. it you know how we're going to budget and they'll also future. be able to, uh, to scan that fancy code uh, this box qr that, code qr yes. code uh, yes. that uh, our good friend yes sean call you always uh making sure we have that qr code so y'all see that qr code up there too right new technology is moving that gets you right there huh but please go to the website. It has so many things. It has information about the plan. It has information about, because we're doing downtown right now. But it actually, this will look at me. Oh, go I'm ahead. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to me. Go ahead. Um, oh, so, but it has information about where we want to possibly expand downtown. So you can see that on the map. It shows the areas that we might want to expand. That is if the community wants it to be expanded. Mm -hmm. If the community doesn't want it to expand it, then we won't. Mm -hmm. um, you can go on there. You can give comments. We get the comments. Um, you, I mean, really, it's just a space where um, the community can participate if they can't come to one of our meetings. Mm -hmm. So we're having small focus group meetings. And if you want to participate in a small focus group meeting, that's five or six people that we have come in. And they talk to me and the consultant. They talk to me and the consultant. And, um, and then, but we're having a huge community meeting. I say huge, I'm hoping that it's huge, on Ju June, January 30th. Okay, January 30th. At the Collaboratory mm -hmm. at 530. 
So um, we're hoping the whole community comes out and we're going to have maps on the wall. We're going to have a lot of staff that can talk to you about what's going on. It's going to be really iterative. I mean, you know, when we learn from the community, we're going to um, oh, we're going to put that in the plan because that's how we want the plan to go. Let me do my little soapbox. If you uh, if you don't show up and get involved, don't be the one sitting around complaining. You just un you just realize and understand where to go to get information. So get involved as a community and that's that's and you guys welcome the participation, right? More than welcome. We are enlisting it. We're begging for it actually. So we just I just gave you three different ways. Please go to the website. Please, uh, when you're on the website, my email is on there, and you can email me and say you want to participate in a focus group, or you can come out Jan and or I should say, you can come out January 30th. So focus groups do have power. They do. I mean, it's a small group, and you're talking to us, and mm -hmm. we're working at a table like this, and you know, drawing on the maps. So yes. one of the things you said earlier is that if it's not in a plan, it doesn't get implemented. Who creates this plan? Is that your board of advisors, the city council that then acts as the commissioners and things like that, y'all work together on that plan? Or does that come down from on high if the federal government, the state, and who and all that it relates to CRA uh, areas? You must do this for a living. You have a lot of good questions. So <laughs> the CRA is the, um, was created through a uh, state statute, Florida Statute 163, Part 3. And so all our rules are in there. And it says that we can create a plan. Staff, working with the community, working with the board, we all work together to come up with this plan. It is approved by our board, and our board happens to be the same people that are on city council. Right. That is a good thing because then what the CRA does is in line with what the city wants mm -hmm. to have done. So that Not works a out. lot of surprises come across this uh, the city council's desk that is then you in a tug of war, right? Because right. they have a vested interest too in making these uh, plans become a reality. There you go. And you know, we, we work hand in hand with the city to get things done. Um, I, since I'm talking about the downtown plan, I can use that as an example. The city was putting in new water and sewer downtown mm -hmm. and the CRA did the streetscape. And so the CRA is the reason that um, the streets are brick. Um, and the lights are different and, you know, the parking is the way it is. It's because the CRA was able to provide that. Now, so. the way you describe that, doctor, is that it almost as though the CRA comes along and puts the lipsticks and the earrings and the mascara and the beautification of a lot of things that we see and we kind of take them for granted. Is that a good way to look at it? That is. And some, and, and some nice and cologne. <laughs> Sometimes that is true, but sometimes we're down in the dirt too. You're in the because dirt. we can we can pay for um, the water and the sewer, but we don't do anything that the city was already going to do. Mm -hmm. We d we do do the lipstick. We do what's extra. Mm -hmm. So if the city wasn't planning on putting a new water line in, and um, the CR can't put the water line in, but if the city was it was in the city's plan, then we can't. But also it has to be in our plan. Like I told you, we have to have it in our plan. Mm -hmm. I want you to go back to, I heard you say, what are, you, you mentioned the CRA bucks. I want to slow that down because okay. when you say bucks, I'm like, that sounds like money. It is money. It's on the website and it's $8 million. Really? And so that's how much money that we take in for the um, downtown CRA. So that's how much we have to spend. How would you spend $8 million if you had, um, had it to spend downtown? And so that's what we're asking. What would you do? Um, what kind of projects would you do? Would you put in new street lights? Would you put in new sidewalks? One of the things that um, has come up several times already is a better way to cross MLK. Because I don't know if you've ever tried to cross MLK from downtown. It's, it's, you're taking your life in your hands sometimes. So we're trying to figure that out. And so some people are asking for um, better crosswalks or you know, should it be a, a you know, overpass? I don't know. People need to ask and tell me what they think should go there. But the, I mean, so anyway, you have eight million dollars and then we have a bunch of choices of how you can spend it. And you can spend eight million dollars on street lights, or you can spend five hundred thousand dollars on street lights. You can spend twenty five thousand dollars on, you know, new facades or you could spend eight million dollars on it. But you only have eight million dollars. So, if, you know, it's just like in real life, your budget. You make $8 million a year. You know you can only spend, you know, when you get to the yeah, 8 million, you're done. Yeah, I make more than $8 million a oh. year. But <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I, want one, I got one question I want to get in is that 
this plan that you're talking about, is it a one year plan, a five year plan, a 10 year plan? How does that work and is it constantly uh, changing as time goes on? So as a planner, we make our plans for 20 years. Really? We're thinking about 20 years mm -hmm. from now, but we update it every five years. Gotcha. So because what I think today is gonna happen in 20 years may be very, very different. The world is changing very quickly. So in five years, we go back and we update it. But also we can do amendments to the plan any time in between if something big comes up that we need to see. But it has to be a real amendment to the plan. Mm -hmm. And it has to go through the same process as creating the plan, which is community input, cr the creation of the plan, taking it to the board for approval. So mm -hmm. I said one more question. Luckily, I own the TV show. I can go as long as I want to. And when you said amendments, I thought about Hurricane Ian, uh, something that you couldn't predict. Would that have impacted uh, an amendment? Did y'all do some amendments along that way? Well, that'll tell you how good our plan was. Mm -hmm. We actually didn't have to do an amendment. We had so many things in there that were already, that we could provide. We had um, programs, we have a grant that we provide to um, commercial businesses mm -hmm. and it's called the facade, no it's not, it's called the commercial property improvement grant. That's okay. what it's called. And you can apply for that and you can get a match, a 50-50 match or a 75-25 match. It's two tiers. I don't know if you want me to go through all of that, but the point is, if you want to improve your facade, you can apply for that grant mm -hmm. and we'll give you a match. And it's, it's a reimbursement, but you can get your whole facade improved. And so a lot of the people who had damage from the hurricane have applied for that. Outstanding. Well, Doc, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Always a pleasure. Looking forward to getting you back in the future. <laughs> okay. All right, stay right there. So stay in gold on this particular show for those who say it can't be done. They're usually interrupted by those like the fine people at the City of Fort Myers Community Redevelopment Agency. And remember, Miami might have the oranges, but the CRA has got the juice. It's bump. We'll see you. The Fort Myers CRA advances businesses through their landscape and facade grant. In doing this, it really helps with their curb appeal. You advance one business with curb appeal, and then it's like a ripple effect, and before you know it, you have a brand new community. Existing businesses receive assistance with their marketing and promotions. The CRA also provides training grants for higher wage jobs and tech jobs, preparing our workforce for the future. The Fort Myers CRA is working to revitalize our redevelopment areas, and we're doing this by advancing businesses, transforming communities, and redeveloping Fort Myers for the future. Lee Pitts Live is a Lee Pitts Enterprise production. Hello everybody, this is Lee. I'm so glad that you watched that particular show, and if you enjoyed that show, we got other shows like that. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch Lee Pitts Live on demand anytime, and also hit us up on all our social media platforms. Just type in Lee Pitts Live, and there you go.